Does your farm or ag business use a boom sprayer? Whether it's big or small, calibration is critical to making sure it works properly and cost effectively. Over the next few moments, we'll review the proper procedures to calibrate your boom sprayer equipment. There are a few basic tools you'll need. A small and a large tape measure, some marker flags, stopwatch, and a calibration cup. Before we get started, it's necessary to understand why it's important to calibrate equipment. First, proper calibration will mean that the right amount of material is applied to your crops. Too much or too little will affect your crop yield negatively, as well as wasting money. How often should you calibrate? Well, ideally, depending on usage and the types of materials involved, calibration should take place several times during the year. Some products are harder on nozzles than others, so timely calibration becomes important. Before starting the calibration process, make sure that anyone involved in the calibration is wearing the appropriate protective equipment, especially gloves, to avoid unnecessary exposure to pesticide materials. Even though the test should be conducted with only water, some residues may still be present in the sprayer system. Step 1. Measure the distance between your output nozzles. You'll use this measurement to determine the proper length of your calibration course. Refer to this chart. It's available online or from your agriculture extension educator to find the required distance. Make sure to use this distance to measure the correct course length in order to guarantee an accurate calibration. Step 2. Measure and mark the length of your calibration course based on the distance determined in Step 1. This should take place on ground that's similar to your application areas. Step 3. While running the tractor at the same speed and spray pressure you would use when making an application, record the amount of time it takes to drive the distance measured out in the calibration course. Be sure to have the tractor running at the proper speed and spray pressure before reaching the first flag that indicates the start of the course. It's best to do these runs with the sprayer tank half-filled, as this will represent an average material load. Ideally, do a second run on the course and find the average time for the two runs. Step 4. For the same amount of time it took to drive the calibration course, and at the same tractor RPMs and pressure, catch the output of each of the sprayer nozzles in the calibration cup. As you can see from the color and condition of the sprayer output, personal protective gear, especially gloves, are very important when conducting a calibration. Step 5. Because of the course measurement, the total ounces collected will directly translate to a gallons per acre output. Once you've measured the output from one nozzle, do the same for all the sprayer nozzles. Ideally, the output for each nozzle will be the same. If the output from a specific nozzle is more than 5% different, that indicates a problem with that nozzle. During this step, you can also see if any of the nozzles are discharging product incorrectly. They may be worn and producing an increased output, or may be clogged and under applying. If you need to replace a damaged nozzle, it's best to replace them all at the same time. Remember, Proper calibration will mean that the right amount of material is applied to your crops. Too much or too little may negatively affect your crop yield, as well as wasting money. It's also important to remember that some product formulations cause more wear and tear on nozzles, so ideally, equipment should be calibrated several times during the growing season. This is especially important during times of heavy use. Having your equipment functioning properly makes all of your applications safer, more accurate, and more cost-effective.